Matt, just uh, you held them to thirty nine percent shooting. Their three best players were all under their averages by a mile. In some cases, just what did you guys do defensively that um, you know, worked? Why well, I think um, you know we really wanted to make a conscious effort to stick with those guys um, on the perimeter. But we also wanted to help to the best of our ability when they when they drove the ball, especially with Hayes and Half when they get in their ISOs. Um, but we also knew that that could be a problem for us because now it's you know when, when you drive the basketball and you, and you make plays, obviously you're scoring at the rim, but you're also getting to the free throw line, and then you get your guys in, in trouble. So we wanted to give as much help as we could with not exposing ourselves and letting them shoot perimeter shots. And we got all the respect in the world for Koenig. I mean, I, I think he. I think he makes them go. I think when he gets going early in the game, that really helps their team because now he's scoring, he's distributing, and then um, you know, Hab and Hayes were, were guys that we knew were going to get a lot of opportunities, but we just wanted to try to keep them in front to the best of our ability and make them score over us. And at times we we did okay, and at other times you know we struggled in that area. But we still didn't want to open up the box where they're getting layups, threes, free throws. You know, maybe they might score some tough twos over us. And uh, we're just going to live with some of it. Matt, yeah. many possessions in a game, but probably none more important than Trice misses the layup that would have cut it to two. Yeah. You come right back now. I think you ran three sets, seemed like for Klein, and, right. the, and, and it's a 12 0 run, and that was a ball game. But interesting how sometimes one possession can turn it right. Did you Would you agree that game, that was a huge? Yeah, it was huge. Just, you know, not, um, you know, they. They're going to make a basket, and now you're going to set up and you know, try to you know, gain a little momentum. And they, you know, you don't, you're not able to gain that momentum. And you know, we were fortunate enough to you know, make the next plays and uh, start a run of our own. And uh, it's hard on the road. You know, you need everything that you can get on the road, and you want to get that home team reeling a little bit and be able to push that lead down. And uh, that was a huge play for us. How do you reconcile the turnovers in a game like this? Because obviously, it seemed like it was going to be a repeat of last week, maybe, the way that was holding back the good things you were doing defensively in the first half? Well, I think you know, our, our defense was good, and obviously our rebounding offset that. You know, we, our rebound numbers were clearly better than theirs. And, um, you know, so you're, you're minus nine on the turnovers, but then you're plus 12 rebounds. You actually you have more possessions in the game, so it just kind of offsets it. So I thought our defense was great. I thought our rebounding was great. We just we didn't take care of the basketball. And uh, we had some, some plays in the post that, you know, where we traveled and we had some, you know, careless passes. And then, you know, half us, so I don't know what they give him for steals. He has six steals. So, you know, his, his hands are so good. He's so, you know, he's so much quicker than everybody he goes against. And uh, we didn't adjust to that. Matt, two questions. Um, first, were you surprised that Caleb decided to come back and not, not go the NBA route? And secondly, in what ways have you seen him grow his game? And grow personally right. this year from last year. You know, I really didn't know. I, I knew where the kind of the consensus was of where they said he was going to be in the in the draft or not in the draft. Um, so you just try to, you know, gather information and, and what people tell you. But really, he's he's got you know a good support system. A lot some guys don't, but you know you got a good support system when your guardian's an agent. And, um, so that, so they know what they're doing. I, I thought he used the opportunity for what it's supposed to be used for. You know, he took what they said and. You know, he's, he's come back and he's improved his body even more. And uh, he's done a good job of playing through other people, even though he's our leading scorer. You know, when he's passing the ball, moving the ball, being opportunistic, um, he's very, very efficient. You know, if you're going to give him a three, takes a three, and give him a post up. You know, tonight obviously he had the turnovers, but, um, you know, he's just improved in every facet of the game. He puts in extra time, he works really, really hard at it. But just the experience of playing, you know, I mean, how many guys play in college basketball? In their first year, average ten and eight, and they skipped their senior year in high school. And they went three years of high school, so you know just that experience of going that first year in college, which is really his fourth year, you know, since middle school where he's three hundred eighty pounds. And he just has an unbelievable story, and he just you know keeps getting better. I don't, I don't see how he's not going to you know keep improving down the line, especially when he's a pro. What did you like about Ryan's second half? Well, I thought Ryan had a good fight to him the whole game. I thought he stuck his nose in there and got some. Got some rebounds for us and some loose balls. I thought he defended well. Just um, was just aware of what was going on um, offensively and defensively. Then obviously making you know those shots for us in that stretch was huge. Matt uh, Isaac came off the bench second yeah. time today. 
how do you feel he did with that with that challenge, and how do you think he responded, especially today? Right. Well, I thought he did a great job. Um, you know, obviously got a little bit of foul trouble in that first half, but offensively he did good. But you know, more than anything, you know, made his free throws and he played pretty good defense. And I thought his size bothered him a little bit, and uh, he was very active there in that second half. Matt, the, the Big Ten implications by you winning this, if, it, if Wisconsin had beaten IU, won at IU, and then won at Purdue, they would have been in pretty pretty solid shape even early in the season. So how, how crucial was this win to get to get the race where you wanted to be? Right. Well, I don't think it's, you know, anytime you're dealing with a race, I think you, you, you kind of start to eyeball things once you get to the halfway mark. You like it to be even. It's not always even. You know, we start five out of our first seven games at home. It's not even. If somebody starts, you know, five out of their first seven games on the road, you know, it's just, it's, it's, so a lot of people want to compare in, in a short amount of time, you know, three games, four games. And I think you wait to that halfway mark and you kind of, you know, you know, kind of look at, you know, where you are and what you have to do. But when, when you're playing and coaching, you really just, you know, focus on kind of the human nature, you know, aspect of things. You know, you're, you got your next game. We just played Iowa. Iowa swept us last year. We've already beat them once this year. You know, you know they're going to be on edge. You know they're going to be hungry. You know they want to get a win. So now you got to get your kids psychologically ready to go and play them and compete, and uh, hopefully get that win. But it's going to be tough if, if you got guys on the bus that don't realize it's going to be tough. You know, they're either really immature, really inexperienced, or just flat don't get it. I mean, it's going to be an unbelievable game for us. So keeping our focus on our next game is so important, and then not having distractions. I think a lot of times when you you're, you're trying to win and be successful, school starting. Um, you might not have a good game. You, know, you can't get into yourself. You got to be able to, to be a team guy and and uh, just get ready for that next game and be mature about it. What have you seen from Isaac the past two games? Have you seen anything different from him? The effort level, the physicality, the aggressiveness, whatever. I, I thought he played well. Um, you know, he had a couple opportunities in the Ohio State game um, down low. You know, he didn't make his free throws in that game. He was two for five. Um, but just, you know, when he just stays focused and, and he does little things and he's fundamentally sound, he's so big and he's hard to cover. Um, but, you know, he definitely gave us a, a jolt, you know, off the bench tonight. And that's what we need him to keep doing, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. You know, just, just be ready to play and be fundamentally sound. Sticking with Isaac, just how much do you need him to continue doing what he did tonight if this team's going to compete for a Big Ten championship, make a run in the tournament? I'm going to have to to have him, whether he's coming off the bench or starting doing what he does. Right. Well, you know, he's a unique player. You know, he gives you something that other people don't have. You know, you go against quality players um, a lot, but you don't go against quality players that are 7 two, 300 pounds. And, uh, you know, if he can establish position and he'll make a, you know, a good decision once he gets the basketball, <laughs> they're really in a bind. You know, they're in a bind. He's just going to have to miss in a one-on-one -on -one move. But, you know, he gets in, in, into, into rut sometimes where he gets away from his strength, you know, he'll over dribble. Um, he won't post deep. When he posts deep and he keeps things simple, and he doesn't over dribble. You know, you're, you're just at kind of at his mercy because he can get to a spot on the court that, other, that most other guys can't get on the court. Hey Matt, um, how improved does Dakota Mathias from this year last year and his minutes would suggest he's really really important for the second team in minutes for you? Right. Or, yeah, no, Dakota's been great. Yeah, where he's improved the most is defensively. You know, you can't have enough people on your team that you trust. A lot of times in, in coaching, you know, players don't understand that at a young age. You know, can the coaching staff trust you? Can you follow your assignment? Can you do what you're supposed to do? And, you know, just be accountable as a player. And he's one of those guys that's really accountable. And he's, but he's gotten better. He, you know, he's had some, some tough lessons last year. His minutes went down. Last year he played more, at the, you know, towards the end of the season where he played around 20 minutes a game if I'm mistaken. But I think the true testament to a good player is when a coach can't take you out. You know, and then like, you know, there's some guys that didn't play as much today, I'd like to play more. But you just, you know, you don't feel good about taking that guy out just because they, you know, they're, they're so steady. And, and that's where he is for us right now. He's just a steady player. And, uh, but his defense is the thing that keeps him out on the court now. Matt, I don't know if you've answered this, but what kind of problems does Ethan Happ pose at both ends of the floor? Right, well, Ethan Happ, obviously, you know, with the six steals, it, you know, he's, he's so much quicker than anybody that we play on our front line. So when you're, you're trying to, you know, like a dribble handoff or a ball screen, he just gets his hands in there. He's always, you know, moving his feet. Um, it's hard to throw the ball in the post against him. He doesn't allow you to get contact. He kind of jumps left to right. Kind of plays post defense, you know, different than anybody we go against. But he's so fast for somebody 6'9", that he just causes a lot of problems. Then his ability to dribble the basketball. 
You know, just the most big guys when they dribble, they can't dribble and pass. You know, he can dribble, he can spin, he can pass. And uh, that, that's really, that's the one matchup for us when, when Hayes and him kind of get into that mid post when they're not deep, um, and they're kind of free throw line extended and they start to drive it and then they put their shooters out there. It's hard for us to, to really read what to do just because he's so good with the dribble. Matt, how much do you enjoy, appreciate the paint crew that kind of gives and pays homage to you? And yeah. What kind of difference do they make? Well, I think it was uh, our administration did a good job of splitting them. You know, most of the time you have a you have a section, then they're on one side of the court. We always used to say, you know, in the second half it's going to get really loud. The opposing team's going to be down there by our, our student section. Now we've been able to split our student section so they're at both ends to kind of, you know, balance our noise. And uh, so, you know, so hopefully you have an advantage at both ends. But our, our student section is, is great. I think you saw that tonight, you know, in the game. You know, obviously our fans are great, but um, anytime you get your student section, they can come out like that and wait and, you know, spend a lot of time, you know, in and around our program. It uh, really helps. Shining and bright. Um, Nigel Hayes goes four for 12 tonight. Um, I think one of the games last year, he had 30 points against you. Um, 31. <laughs> what what were you guys uh, specifically able to do against uh, Nigel to, to limit him off of Yeah, he struggled against us at third place. They didn't, I think they were really, when we played him in the first game of the season last year, they were really fine to themselves. And then at the end, he actually didn't have a good stretch those six, seven games before he played us. You know, he wasn't shooting the ball at a high percentage. And then he came in and we... We still felt like you know he had to have a big game to get us. We put Rayfell Davis on him, and he mm -hmm. he just had his way with him. And uh, really, uh, you know, we really didn't have an answer for him. A couple of the, of his shots tonight, I thought he just missed. You know what I mean? It's like good <laughs> players sometimes get where they want to get, and they just miss it. So I thought he had a couple, but for the most part, um, we got a little bit lucky because he was in and out in the first half with some with some foul trouble. But just trying to make it hard on him, and then trying to get him to score over us not getting to the basket, not getting an angle. Because the thing that you know concerns us is if Nigel Hayes is getting everybody involved, if Hap is getting everybody involved, and they're getting themselves involved, and they're getting to the free throw line, and um, we, we just didn't want everything. But you know, he, he's a good player. It's, he's a tough matchup. You know, we go and play the game again, and we do the same exact thing. You know, he's not getting the same numbers. He's getting better numbers than that. You just, you know, you just try your best on certain guys like that that are, that are really good and uh, hope for the best. This is three games in a row now. You guys have done a good job on Kaming. Uh, you mentioned before right. how important he is. Just how come you've had some success against him? Well, I know the game before that that game was our Big Ten tournament game where we led at halftime and they killed us in the second half and he, he just went wild. And um, I we just try to stay with him. I, mean, I, don't, I don't have some unbelievable strategy for you. Um, we just try to stay with him. Just try to make it tough on him. Don't give him space. He loves to dribble and create space and shoot the basketball or break it down and make a play. So we just try to take up his space, try to keep him in front of us, but just don't let him get any free ones. I thought other night against Indiana, he just got some free ones. And then once he did, then he made tough ones. So he got you know two really good looks to start the game. He buries them. And then after that, he made tough ones. And uh, we, we just said, hey, we can't start the game you know, with Koenig just you know, hitting threes and getting in that groove. Because I think when that happens, I think people are in trouble. Thank you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.